Hello, Namaste, Salamu Alaikum, Hola, Bonjour, Nihao, Onichiwa, Anyang Arseo. In my previous video, we saw how UV does the cell synchronization or the initial cell search by reading PSS, SSS, SIV1, MIP. After it does the cell synchronization, it goes and reads SIV2 which contains important parameters for random access procedure. In this video, we are going to focus on timing advance, which is the subpart of overall, overall random access procedure for which we have a separate detailed video. Before jumping on to what is timing advance and why do we need it, how do we do it, let's see the initial steps of random access procedure. Initial steps are UV sensor, Ratch preamble and denote the response back with random access response. Uh, how it happens, what, what preamble sequence does we use, what power it use, what subframe it use, all is provided, all the info is provided in SIP2. But again, the whole random access procedure we will see in detail video is a separate topic. Let's focus on timing and once. So what is time? What is timing at once and why do we need it? Let's say there are two UVs. One UV is at the cell edge, which is at the farthest distance from E node B, and one UV is at the nearby end. So definitely there is a delay, or what we call it as a propagation delay. So as we see in the diagram, when the preamble sequences from the nearby UV reaches the E node B, it comes within the window of the reception of the preamble phase and it consumes less guard time whereas the UE2 which is little far from E node B consumes more guard time so now this T1 and T2 is the leftover time or remaining time of the guard period or the available period from the we get T1 and T2 dip from overall guard time minus the leftover guard time basically, basically this is nothing but your consumed time or nothing but a propagation delay or time from this we will calculate the distance of the UV distance is equal to speed into time so as you see in this slide we get the distance of UV1 as well as UV2 which is time into 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second as the speed of electromagnetic wave spectrum is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second Timing advance is required for uplink synchronization. At the E node B side, uplink and downlink should be synchronized. What do we mean? So, why do we do timing advance and how do we do? We will see in the next slides. Let's say resource block 4 is allocated to UE2 at uplink or stop frame starting at time t and ending at time t plus 1. Now, what happens is, in order to start the uplink transmission, you need to determine the time of downlink subplane, based on which it will find the reference point to start the uplink transmission, so that the uplink and downlink has to be synchronized at the E node B side. And for that purpose, we use, we use timing advance at the UE side, Timing advance is nothing but a negative offset basically. At the UE side, at the start of the receive, received downlink subframe and between the transmission of uplink subframe. So this UE2 will start the transmission only after there is a downlink subframe arrival. Since UE2 is far, there will be a lag, which is propagation delay 2. So at T plus propagation delay 2, UV2 will start its uplink transmission and it will reach E node B at T plus 2 times the propagation delay 2. As you see, there is a lag, right? So now, originally the E node B was expecting at time T, but now it has received it at time T plus 2 times propagation delay 2. So the end time, which was T plus 1, will also get shifted by equal amount of time which is t plus 1 plus 2 times propagation delay 2 okay now 
Until here, there is no problem. But let's say at time t plus 1, the same resource block 4 is allocated to ue1 for uplink something starting at t plus 1. Now, same goes for ue1. It calculates the downlink subframe arrival time, which comes with a lag of propagation delay 1, and it starts at transmission at t plus 1 plus propagation delay 1 and you see the e not b again receives the uplink transmission at t plus 1 plus 2 times propagation delay 1 so if you see in the red circle since ue1 has ue2 has not completed its uplink transmission within the time frame t plus 1 there is a interference at the e not b side so, in order to avoid this interference, we use the timing advance. So, what will what E not be does is it based on the distance calculated and the propagation delay calculated, it will tell UE, hey, why don't you advance your timing of uplink transmission so that I receive you or I hear you within the D1 time frame. Let's see what happens in next slide. So, what does UE do upon receiving the timing advance command? in random access response, it will adjust its uplink transmission by the amount of propagation delay sent in the command. So now what happens is, see the UE2 is now basically sending you the uplink transmission little earlier, like two times the propagation delay. So it reaches the E not be at the expected time t ends at expected time t1 same goes for ue1 so there is no interference and timing advance is sent as a max tensor element in the random access response by e not b so now we know that what is timing advance and why it is required and this is very important before we jump on to understand the overall random access procedure which which will be followed in the next video so stay tuned and keep watching and if you like this video please press the like button subscribe and share with your friends because sharing is caring thank you